All right, algebra, this is the last one we're going to do in chapter 6. These are called compound inequalities, and it's kind of like a compound word. You know, a compound word puts, puts two words together. A compound inequality puts two inequalities together. And we may have, I think we might have done a little of these earlier. Uh, I do get confused with all the classes that, that I have. A compound inequality would be... Um, there's really there's there's two ways to do it. Um, I always say that they are either and there are and statements or or statements. So here's an and. Um, it could be three is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to five. This is an and. Um, this is x is when you read in any you start usually in the middle and read out this way, then go this way. So when you read an inequality backwards, you say the opposite. So this is x is greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 5. So it's a little weird. So basically it means that x is between these two numbers right here. And when this is underlined, it includes those two numbers. Okay. So we'll do a couple and hopefully you'll see. An or statement means x is greater than 5 or x is less than 2. Now, let me show you in the graph of these. Here's 3 and here's 5. You would circle the 3 and the 5, and a graph of a compound and inequality would be in between there. And or means it goes one way or the other. That makes me think of a song. There's one that goes one way or the or another. Yeah, sorry. I have to sing, you know, 2, 3, 4, Five. So this one would be x is greater than 5. It would go that way. There's the one way. x is less than 2. There's the other. So and they meet others. Ors go in, in opposite directions. So let's take a look at these and see what we got in store for us. Translate the verbal phrase into an inequality, then graph the inequality. All real numbers that are greater than 2 and less than 3. Okay, so... Uh, and means it's going to be compound. So the smaller number goes on the left, the bigger number on the right, and they all have less than. So it is greater than negative 2 and less than 3. It didn't say equal to, so we're done. So here's negative 2, here's 3, you circle them, and there's our graph right in between. That's it. All real numbers that are less than 0 or... Now remember the ors, they go one way or another, all right? So we're going to go uh, x is less than 0 or uh, x is greater than or equal to 2. So here's our 0, circle it, we go this way. Here's our 2, circle it, color it in, it goes that way. Okay, so the difference between an and a compound inequality and an or compound inequality, besides the fact I have to sing. That's kind of scary. All right, all real numbers that are less than negative 1 or greater than or equal to 4. So the or tells me i got to go two different ones. So x is less than negative 1, x is greater than or equal to 4. So I go negative 1, circle it, it goes that way. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, circle it, color it in, goes that way. There it is. All real numbers that are greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than 5. Okay, so the and tells me that it's all hooked together. The smaller number on the left, they all... All compound inequalities have less than, okay? Even though you say greater, remember you start here and read it backwards. Greater than or equal to and less than negative 5. So this one, when you're at negative 3, that one's going to be colored in. This one over here, when you're at 5, that's not colored in. And then the line goes in between them. Pretty cool stuff. The crane sits atop a camera car and faces towards the front. The crane's maximum height and minimum height, minimum height above the ground are shown. Write and graph a compound inequality that describes the possible heights of the crane. Okay, what's the lowest? Four feet? Equal to four or 18? Okay. 
Yep, there it is. Just from the lowest to the highest. That's easy. All right. Um, we are ready to solve a compound inequality with and. This is, check this thing out. This right here is a compound inequality that needs to be solved. So we are going to solve for x. All right. Now, we are used to having two parts. We've had equations before that have had two parts. Now, I want you to look at this. This has three parts. There's one here. This is a part right here. You have this part in the middle, and then you have this part. All right. Our job is to get this x by itself, so we have to get rid of the plus 5. So to get rid of the plus 5, you have to, you're doing it. They're doing it different. I don't like the way they're doing it. Because you can just leave it all, they're separating it. Let's leave it together. And you minus 5 here. And then the key is you have to minus 5 from all parts, the three parts, not just two of them. So then you have negative 3, and then x, and then 4. I don't like the way the book, just if it's an and, you just, just make sure you do it to all three parts of the compound inequality. Okay, they do it a different. I don't remember. I don't teach it that way. See, they 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 separated them, which is fine, and they get the same answer that we do. They put it together, but we didn't have to take it apart and then put it back together. We just left it together and solved it. I think that's the best way when it's an and and like that. Okay. So for guide of investing in investor shares. This, Buy shares of stock and will sell them if the change in value from the purchase price of a share is less than negative 33 or greater than 450. Write and graph a compound inequality to describe the changes. So the lowest number is negative 3. The highest number is 450. So it has to be less than or equal to that or less than or equal to that. And then the graph would, oh, uh, wait a minute. Was there an or in there? Or, oh shoot, there was an or. Look right there, how did I miss that? So it's not this way. Yeah, it's x has to be less than negative three or x is greater than 450, my bad, shoot. Okay, so we got three, I hope you see the three parts I'm talking about. Find the x, to get the x by itself, you add five right here. We add five here, and since there's another part, we also have to add five right there. So just go through and simplify those cancel out, leaving the x, and then that's done. And then the graph, and we'll look at the graph. There it is. So this one, there's this is a two-step in between. We're still trying to get y by itself. You still get rid of what's added or subtracted. So notice I minus 4 from here, which I have to minus 4 here and minus 4 here. So I'm going to get 6. There's still a 2y right here. Now we don't have y by itself, that's 2 times y, so we're going to have to divide that by 2, but we also have to divide these all by 2, and we got it. This is kind of fun, because I like the algebra stuff, so add 1, add 1, add 1, so I get negative 6 less than negative z less than 3. Can't have a negative. That needs to change to a positive because there's a negative one, so I'd have to divide by negative one. So I get um, six, and you have to flip the sign. Flip the sign and negative three. Now we have a problem. Compound inequalities, you can't have the sign, you can't have the smallest number on the right. So we have to do, I call this peel it. We're going to pick this whole thing up, and we're just going to peel and reverse everything. So we're going to put the negative 3 here, the 6 here, the z stays in the middle, and then the signs get reversed. So in a compound inequality, the smallest number has to be on the left side. But we still we had to flip those up there. And then we graph it. How did I get 4? That's not right. I messed up there. All right. Solve a compound inequality with and again. I don't know. We're, we're doing the same thing kind of here. We're going to add 3 here, 
add 3, add 3, that cancels out. I get negative 2, negative x, and 5. Can't have this negative divide by, there's an unwritten 1, divide by negative 1. 2 is great, I have to flip the sign because I divided by the negative. And then notice we have to flip this back because the negative is on this side which flips the signs back around and there's my final answer. Now they're solving it the way that, okay, there we go. And then here's they're talking about rewriting it, just flipping it over. Okay, now or, if there's an or, now we have two separate. This is its own inequality to solve, and this is its own inequality to solve. So you just go minus 3, minus 3. 2x is less than 6, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 3. Then over here, or you go add 6, add 6, 3x is greater than 18, divide by 3, x is greater than 6. So there's the or, and then you're going to go 3, 6, it's going to go that way, and this one's going to circle and go that way. And then you are done. So you do those separately. When it's or, you do the, the problem separately because they're not hooked together. They go in different directions. Okay. So this one, we would, this is an and, because it's all hooked together there. Add 8, add 8, add 8. So I'm going to get negative 6 is less than x is less than 7. And that's, signs are going the right way and then we'll let them do all the graphing. This one I would minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 5t, less than or equal to 2, divide by negative 5. I get positive 3 fifths, had to flip the sign because of the negative, negative 2 fifths. So this negative two-fifths is smaller. I have to peel all this over, flip all those signs back, since I'm peeling it, and then we're done. And then you graph it. Here's an or, which means two separate ones, minus one, minus one. Three h is less than negative four, divide by three. h is less than negative four-thirds, which is one and one-third. Add 5, add 5, 2h is greater than 12, divide by 2h is greater than 6. And so then our graphs would go in two different directions, and there it is. Minus 1, minus 1, I didn't do that right. Look at this, minus 5, negative 5 minus 1 is not negative 4, it's negative 6. I didn't even boom boom it, that's supposed to be a 2, negative 2, wow. Maybe I need to stop making these. All right, minus 1, minus 1. I'm not going to make that mistake again here. 4c is less than or equal to negative 4. Divide by 4c is less than or equal to negative 1. Or add 3, add 3. 5c is greater than 20. c is greater than 4. So one's going one direction, and the other one's going the other. So. All right, example number six says astronomy and the Mars Exploration Rover's Opportunity and Spirit are robots that were sent to Mars in 2003 in order to gather geological data about the planet. The temperature at the landing sites of the robot can range from negative 100 degrees to zero degrees. Write a compound inequality that describes the possible temperatures. Okay, so a compound inequality would just be... Um, Solve the inequality. The in, well, the inequality is just going to be this right here. 
these are the numbers we would use. So negative 100 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 0. Okay. And then it wants us to, oh, they want us to change it to Fahrenheit. I gotcha. Ooh, this is ugly. So there's our inequality. And then to change this to Fahrenheit, the, these, this is Celsius, change it to Fahrenheit, you have to put in the formula. There's that. And now we have to solve that. That's ugly right there. You have to do the distributive property or multiply. Oh, I see what they're doing. It's getting rid of that fraction. Add 32. Wow. And then you can just find temperatures in between. So 11, they're doing the same thing. You would have, let's just get it written out. Negative 133 degrees is less than or equal to C is less than or equal to negative 7 degrees. So here you would put that would be that, I go back to that formula, what was that? 5 ninths F minus 32, okay? I know I can do this. 5 ninths F minus 32 is less than or equal to negative 7 degrees. And they got rid of this by multiplying by 9 fifths. So then we would multiply everything over here by 9 fifths. So we'd have F minus 32 still in the middle. And let me get my trusty calculator. 133 times 9 divided by 5, 239.4. And then over here, that's going to be 63 divided by 5, 12.6. You would add 32 to each one of these. So that's a 4 and a point, 1, 3 to 1, 7, 271.4. That's going to be an F, 44.6. Solve a compound inequality. Those are the possible temperatures on Mars, right? That Wait, I got some negatives. That was negative, right? Ooh. I forgot that affects my answer, so I subtract there instead of add. 239.4 minus 32, so negative 207.4, and minus 12 would be 20, 20 point 4. 32 minus 12.6 is... 32 minus 12.6, yep, 19.4. Why don't you just trust my head? So it ranges between 19.4 degrees above zero to, to, to negative 207.4 below. So I don't know if we got that right or not. They say 80 points. I got the 20. Hmm. 27. Where the heck are they getting 27 over there? Where are they getting 27 right here? You see their original problem? They put in a 27 right there. I don't see no 27. Oh, I was close. I got that one right. Anyway, whoosh, that's a lot of work right there. Thank goodness for the example. I had to follow the example to go through. So, all right, we better we better stop this madness. So, anyway, there's compound inequalities and an or. Just be careful that you know which one is which. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. And I will be excited to help. There's the graph for that one. All right, talk to you later. Bye.